I uh, continued from the previous video about the potential outcome framework with with the in instrumental variable. Now we are going to think about the assumptions that we needed for the instrumental variable. Previously, we learned the assumptions for the instrumental variable simply uh, in one sentence. Z uh, should affect the outcome only through the treatment. In this example, the fellowship, random fellowship, should affect the earnings only through the education. So fellowship affects education and then of, uh, education affects earnings, but it has no direct, when earnings is determined, uh, the fellowship has no effect. So that is the first. Uh, Uh, first assumption we need, the, there is no direct effect of IV on uh, the outcome. This is in, already embedded. It is already embedded. Uh, do we put two Ds? Anyhow. The idea is originally in a fully general potential outcome framework, we had to consider y, i, z, and d. So here we defined y only as a function of d. So y is just function of d, then already it means that it does not depend on z. But if you think about the order, z is determined first, and then z affects d, and then y is determined. So y is determined uh, later than z, so in principle, still there is a possibility that Z has a direct effect on Y. It is just a, a chronicle order, just timeline, it's just there is no, it is not cause and effect. So it is just first and later and then later. So it is possible that Z affects Y directly. So most general model, the most general uh, potential outcome must depend on everything that's determined before y. So uh, this is an example. However, by writing d, we implicitly assume that y does not uh, directly depend on z. This is uh, this is a uh, kind of assumptions already we imposed. So, so this is uh, the first assumption we needed. And we usually call this, we refer to this assumption, this assumption as, as the exclusion restriction. So we mean, it means that Z is excluded from the outcome equation. Uh, in the determination of outcome, Z is excluded. So many people, many textbooks say exclusion restrictions. And then uh, the second assumption we need is independence. The, the, the most important assumption uh, since the chapter one, since chapter one, uh, to eliminate the selection bias, independence assumption. Here, here is independence of IV. We require independence on the instrumental variable. It has to be uncorrelated and randomly chosen. And in this setup, in this potential outcome setup, so in, so in the earlier models uh, without IV, remember we required, we Required, D uh, is independent of Y I Y zero I and Y one I. Here you may have conditional on X, but we do not consider X at this point. So, you know, the point here is independence between D and the potential outcomes. For example. Uh, it, you you has, like uh, college attendance has to be randomly chosen. Randomly chosen people attend college, even if they don't like it. 
and uh, and see their wages. So that's how we identify the causal effect. But now we know it is not true. It does not hold in the data. So now we have to say that now Z is the instrument is independent uh, of is interestingly poten every potential outcome is coming here. Ah, I, I forgot to say this. So uh, I just made it more clear, but uh, I'm going to write T0i and T1i for di0 and di1. So they are equivalent, but just to save paper, save space, and denote them as y0i and y1i, as usual. So maybe I have used these notations earlier in this course, but I want you to make it a little more explicit to explain its dependence on D. So I introduced this notation first, but I'm going to write it this way. So they are the same thing. I simplified the notation. So anyhow, the point here is your instrument should be independent of every potential object. Uh, not only the choice, but also outcome. For example, let's think about this example again. So suppose that in terms of, uh, in the earnings, uh, in the determination of earnings, uh, the unobserved, like uh, the, the, the key, key problem is the unobserved ability. We do not observe the ability, which is an important factor in the earnings. And suppose that in the determination of, in the college decision, in the college decision, uh, something that's uh, one important thing not observed is the willingness to uh, college education or your motivation, academic motivation, say. So then your fellowship is random, should be independent of first unobserved ability. Unobserved ability, this is what we have been, uh, what we have studied, what we have learned in the earlier chapters. So your experiment has to be independent of the outcomes. Uh, that's true, so that's obvious, trivial. A fellowship should be random in terms of with, like with uh, the unobservability, but at the same time, the fellowship has to be random regardless of your uh, academic motivation. So you, it, when you randomly choose, it means that it's random uh, regardless of your academic motivation or your ability. So literally it has to be random. Uh, so it has to be random, independ independent of academic motivation and unobserved ability. So that's what we need. Okay, uh, this, is two, this is two key assumptions for IV. Then uh, this replaces, this replaces, uh, it replaces uh, the earlier assumption that IV, uh -uh, IV is uncorrelated with Y. So uh, earlier in the earlier videos, I mentioned that the instrument Z has to be correlated with X, but uncorrelated with uh, Y. So that's in this part, is correlation is on correlation of the independence implies on correlated with Y. And of course the dependence uh, is clearly denoted by here. Z affects D, instrumental variable affects your treatment decision. So uh, this notation already signifies the dependence. Okay. Um, I am, oh, so let's cut the video here. I'm going to, to continue in the next one.